Hello, welcome. My name is Christian Glück. I'm product manager from Dynacord, and today I like to talk about what's new in SonicQ 124. So, the first important thing in SonicQ 124 is the expansion of our SonicQ ecosystem. So, in addition to the amplifier and the MAC matrix, we have now a new control option, the WPN1, a 1.7 inch LCD display operated with an encoder that can be configured in SonicQ and can do system-wide control for everything that you run in SonicQ. So, the most important thing, however, for the WPN1 is the very flexible configuration in SonicQ. So, if we go to our catalog and looking at, at, at the panels, you'll find, in addition to the TPC here, the WPN1, which you open in the panel designer as you know it from <coughs> the TPC. And here you see a black canvas which you can completely create as you want. So if all you really need is a volume control for one zone, you bring in the knob. Per default it's set as volume as percentage, but you can also select uh, for linear and, and other things. But for volume control, this is the best way. You can set the values where it should calculate. And under advanced, you can even say, oh, I want to add some text when it reaches minimum, maximum to tell people more. However, if you need to do a little bit more, you can add pages to uh, the wall panel, up to 10 pages. And each page has these five slots where you can bring in, the button is a full page, but you can, uh, the knob, but you can bring in a button that you can completely configure from toggle for mute or turn on and also navigate. So you can really create your own menu based panel if that's needed for more control. Now, of course, you have um, activity timeouts, which means if somebody is not touching the panel, when it should automatically refer to the home screen, which you can determine what page is my home screen. Each page, of course, can get a name. Yeah. However, let's call this thing here ballroom. And um, <clears throat> very important, the WPN1 is not only supporting the Latin alphabet, okay? So you have also the options to basically use other character sets, and we pretty much support most common languages here. Very important for people in countries you're not, not familiar with reading Latin alphabet. Um, in addition to these, these control buttons, you have also uh, the option to determine what is the theme, how shall it look, okay? So you can switch to a light scheme where everybody has then basically a white background with, with, with dark letters or a dark one, which is the default setting. And um, this is, as I said, as flexible as you need it to create the job. So I have prepared here, uh, WPN1 on my little demo system and I have four pages so a restaurant which is just the volume control as an action when you press the encoder um, which I navigate to the second page which is the lobby but whatever that means this is up to you so the lobby is the same as the restaurant, lob control, volume control for, for, for the lobby. The encoder here is navigating to the settings page. On the settings page, I have a few buttons for EQ, for standby the system. And here, going to navigating to another page, technician. And that technician page I've set up with a pin code. So let's, let's now look at the panel that we configured in, in SonicQ. So currently the screensaver is active. On the first press of the encoder, the panel is waking up and I'm in the on the home screen, which in this case is my zone restaurant and I can adjust the volume. Press again, it navigates to the second zone, which is my lobby, same story here. And if I press one more time, I'm on the settings page where I have my EQs that I can adjust. I can turn the system to standby. And if I go down here, there is another page for technician. 
and this page you see is now requesting a PIN code. So on the WPN1 you can have several levels of users, so each page can be protected individually. A very sophisticated way of uh, doing simple controls or even complex one just on the WPN1. So the next important thing is uh, the configuration of control panels for the TGX and IPX amplifiers. So I've created already a control panel here, in this case a TPC1, and uh, different than what you know from the previous release where you connect all the controls to the MXE5, in this case I can connect directly to an IPX or TGX amplifier. So for example, if I take the power button and um, you look at the connections, this is connected to, straight to this IPX amplifier. If I take these panels here and we take a look, okay, what's the connection here you see? This is connected now to the mutes of all the channels driving this zone ballroom. Okay, and what you also see here is that the expression designer in 124 has changed a little bit its face. So there is a single, which currently I can't do because I am already in multiple. You could add here more, <coughs> more controls that should also follow this, but in this case, these are the six channels that I wanted. And for the experts that uh, wanna do quick things, it's also possible to look at this whole expression in so now let's take a quick look at the TPC1. So here we have the content of the control panel that I just showed you controlling the IPX on a TPC1. So I could also bring it to an iOS device or on a desktop app for Windows. I have here the level controls for my zones and most important a power button to switch the entire system to standby maybe you heard in the back the click of the relays and you see power is off fold indication is showing orange system isn't working and if i power it back up amps are turning on everything is fine and this whole combination works directly the tpc1 as system controller with the ipx or tgx the next important addition to SonicQ124 is the function for to copy and paste equalizers <coughs> throughout various devices in the system. So let's go to our speaker system that we have here and switch to tune. Equalizer right now I have not set any equalizer. So let's assume I'm taking my left speaker hang and I want to set some EQs. Let's do a low shelf. 12 dB. And maybe another band here. So, not that this should be meaningful, but you kind of get the idea of what I'm doing here. Okay, so now you could, when this flyout is open, you could just use the control C button or you can open the little flap here that also has these four EQ slots for comparing various settings before you start saving anything. But here you also have the copy and paste. So I can copy this EQ setting for these three bands and if I'm now selecting those speakers here for equalizer, I can simply use either the shortcuts or I press paste and you see it's adding the same EQ from one group to the other group. Important to notice is the copy and paste works for all EQ settings that are identical with inner selection because you can in a multi-selection it's possible that you have a equalizer band that's different, that would be inconsistent. Inconsistent bands will not be copied, only what's consistent. Most important thing is because you see you have the flyout from where you copy to where you paste, so you have a very good visual control what you're actually adding to the new speakers. So 
The last addition to Sonic Q125 is the enhancement in the logic of the NXE5. So for those who already worked with the logic, when you open, you will see a new structure. We have reorganized the catalogs and we have a lot of more items to look at. So the logic blocks, nothing has changed here. Um, selecting for input operations, output operations. But when you look at the input operations, you see there are Sonic Hue expressions. And Sonic Hue's expression, this is really the expression designer that you know from the panel designer. So you have the same way of finding um, <coughs> parameters on each and every device on the system, whether it's IPX or, or TGX, and can use it straight in the logic. Then we have some, again, like before, it's some generic OCA commands. This is important, for example, if you would tie in amplifiers with the RCM28 module or something else speaking OCA. Very, very important addition to the um, logic here is our generic HTTP block. This basically turns the MXE5 to an active HTTP controller. So with this, you can combine in the logic and turn an MXE5 using control options like TPC1, iPad control, even the WPN1 to control third party devices like light systems or a projector or anything that speaks HTTP protocol. So as this is a topic on itself, this is pretty powerful, but also has a certain complexity, we'll have some additional videos later where we talk about just these third-party integration options. But that's not the only really important thing that we have new in, 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 the, in the logic here. We also brought in um, a scheduler. And what you can see here is this allows you to have events that are not only triggered by control devices, but reoccurring events that can happen every minute or every hour or every day or every month or every year. Or if you have something really sophisticated, we have a scheduler in kind of a Linux Chrome theme. So not for everybody, but for experts knowing what they're doing, a very, very powerful tool to get uh, really a level of automation in the system here. So, and last but not least, um, I showed you here the buttons to bring in the expression designer for analog virtual. These little buttons here allow you to export and re-import the text into a text editor, especially in large uh, uh, projects you might have and you see, yeah, this is really what's happening behind the screen. Um, a lot of um, <coughs> For exports that want to be faster, you can basically copy and close and use it in your text editor a choice and then re-import back. So not for everybody, but for some of the hardcore users, I think this is a very powerful way and um, I would say a little preparation to stuff coming pretty soon. Okay, so these were the overview about the most important news in Sonic Q124. I hope you found this video interesting and yeah, thank you for your attention and hope to see you soon.